Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be go over the creation of a level for this controller, just once more with some updated information. I will also show you how to add hitboxes to objects and make interactable objects within the level. For my example, I will be showing you how to create a pick upable gun. First, I have updated the movement for both the FPS movement only and the full FPS shooter system. They are now completely modular and that means you can remove movement types whenever you want. You can remove them during runtime or create new prefabs with less movement options. This is great for adding these movement options throughout your game and not allowing them all right off the bat. As you can see, if you select either the player or the shooter player, depending on which one you're using, the player controller no longer holds all the layers. They are now split up into their own movement components. Note now, anytime I talk about setting the layers, you must now set the layer of each of the movement types that have a layer variable. Ladder movement needs the ladder layer. Grab ledge movement needs the ledge layer. Wall run movement needs the wall run layer. Vault movement needs the vault layer, and surface swimming movement needs the top water layer. Once you make sure these layers are correct, you can play the scene and then enable or disable, or you could just add and remove the movements to your liking. Either removing them or disabling them will stop the player from moving in that way entirely. As you can see, I can vault now, but if I go and disable vault movement and try again, all I do is jump. Note you can find all the different types of movements by going to Assets, FPS Player, Scripts, Movements, and then drag and drop them onto the root of your player prefab like so. Make sure you set the layer and make sure you set the status to change too. If you don't set the status, it'll be messed up like this. So just double check that you set the status correctly and the layer. They should look like this. Also, do not worry, it will not let you add the same type of movement if it's already on the player. Moving around can be a blast, but it does not work if you can't set up the level correctly to be traversable using these movement types. So, I will be going over each of the movement types and how to set them up in a level. First, sliding. Lucky for you guys, you don't need to set anything up for sliding. Just sprint and then press the crouch button and you will slide. Ladders. For ladders, I recommend a box collider and make sure that you set the layer to be ladder. Now to climb it, you need to have the forward direction of the collider away from the wall. So go into local mode, this is important, and then rotate the ladder to have the blue arrow outwards where the player will interact with it. This is because it can only be climbed from the forward direction by the player, and if it faces the wrong way, it cannot be climbed. Next is grabbing ledges. This one is simple. All you have to do is have a collider. I recommend a box collider where you want the player to grab onto and change the layer to ledge. If you're falling down and it detects a collider close enough to grab, then it will. Climbing ledges is easy. All you have to do is have grab ledge movement and then put the climbing ledge movement on there as well. There is no extra settings to change or set up. It will just work with the grab ledge movement. For wall running, all you have to do is set a wall's game object layer to wall run, and the player will be able to wall run on the wall just by jumping on it. Vault movement is easy to do as well. All you have to have is the collider game object set to vault. The player will only be able to vault if it's short enough to do so. You can also vault on another object or just over the collider if it's thin enough. For swimming to work, you need to set up the swimmable areas correctly, so I'll go over how to do that. First, you must have the top water collider. This is a collider trigger on the very top of the water that will call special functions when the player enters the water. The other is the underwater trigger, which is also a collider with the trigger, and it fills up all the underwater space 
that could be swimmable. To create it, just make a collider. Place it where you want the water to be. Make sure it's thin. Set the collider to be a trigger and the game object layer to be top water. Add the water helper component on it with the type being top. You need another collider trigger underneath the top of the water. Make sure the collider is set to trigger and that the game object layer is set to underwater. Add the water helper component with the type being underwater and then resize and position it so it fills everywhere that the water will be contained in. And you have set up your water source. Now, if you just go in and jump into the water, you should be able to swim. That is it for the movement options, but level design is not just moving around the level, you also need to interact with it. Shooting and damaging an object is a way to interact with the level, so let's go over adding hitboxes. What's the point of having guns if you have nothing to shoot at? I have the system to damage things already in place, but I didn't show you how to actually set it up because the other video got so long. Setting up a damageable object that it can be shot is pretty simple. Have your object's root have the component damageable with a set max health of your choosing. Create a box object. This will be the hitbox, so you can name it as such. Drag it onto your damageable object and position, rotate, and scale it to your liking. Set this hitbox's layer to damage zone. Add the damage zone component to this object and set the type of damage that should be applied, body or head. Other types can easily be added to adjust the damage output to your liking. You can add as many damage zones as possible with any collider that you think fits the zone best. This box collider was really only an example. Once you fill all the hit zones, all that is left to do is shoot it up. Well, this is awkward. So make sure that your root object has a collider to shoot at. Otherwise, you won't be able to damage it at all. Well, this thing dies pretty quick. Let's increase that health. There, that's a lot better. And that's how you damage objects. But it doesn't mean much if nothing happens when you shoot them. So let's go over that. The damageable component has two unity events. These unity events are called on specific instances. The on damage event is called whenever this damageable object gets damaged. And the on death is called when this damageable object dies, meaning that its health has hit zero. Using these, you can add specific function calls at these special times. I use it to animate the targets here, but you can use it for pretty much anything that you would like. Here, I created a ragdoll in the likeness of this enemy, and I want to spawn it when it dies. So I created a script with a public function that will clone the ragdoll using the object's position and rotation, and then it destroys itself. To use it, I will just drag it onto the enemy, set the ragdoll game object to the ragdoll I created earlier, and then add a function call to the on-death event. Let's see how it turned out. Well, it works. The ragdoll is a little messed up, but the code works, so that's good enough for me. If you want something to never die, just set the max health to or below zero, and it will never die but it will still be able to get shot at and damaged. An example of this is this bell. It has a call to play a sound when damaged, but since the max health is zero, it never dies and can be shot endlessly. Speaking of bell, if you aren't subscribed with notifications, you should do that right now. You'll get notified when I post videos. And if you aren't subscribed, then you better do that right now too. Anyway, shooting things isn't the only way you interact with the world. 
You also interact with the world by just interacting with objects with the interaction system. That was a lot of interacts. Basically what this means is that the player can interact with objects in the scene. Right now it's pretty limited just to function calling, but stuff can be easily added and adjusted to be much more than what it is currently. To use it, all you have to do is make a new box, set the layer to interactable, and add an interactable component onto it. The interact range is how far the player can be when interacting with this object. The description is what is showed to the player when they are hovering over the object. And then finally, the on interact is a unity event that is called when the player presses E when over this object, as long as they are in interact range. I'll give you an example here on to how to add a pick upable gun using this system. First you want to drag your model into your scene, place it wherever you would like it to be picked up from. Use the box that we created earlier by dragging it into your gun object. Resize and position it so it covers the whole gun, and then go to the root of this object to add a component called gun pickup. And set the pick up this gun to be the gun object that you want to add. In this example, it's the pistol gun object. Make sure that the root here has a collider of itself. You can see that I did add a box collider to this pistol. Just make sure that it's not too big. Now go back to the interactable because we have to set a function call when this is interacted with. So we can go change the description to say something like pick up pistol or whatever gun you are picking up. Then you can add a new event call using the on interact here. So drag the root of this object onto the event call and find and select that function from gun pickup. Now let's test it out. Works like a charm. This can be used to call any function that you would like. Other examples include refilling the player's ammo, opening and closing this door, or pressing that sub button which you should definitely have done by now. I added a new scene to each of the uh, Unity packages that basically has examples of each of these movement types as well. So if you'd like, you can just go and open that demo scene and investigate a little further. Otherwise, I'll be starting my new series, which is going to be a crash course of Unity to help you guys understand the coding basics since it did win the community vote. I'll still be doing the other types of tutorials too, so no worries. The crash course will just be what I focus on for now. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If this helped, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.